Uh, as uh, August is back to school month, I'd like to uh, introduce our speaker today, Catherine Basham, uh, who Catherine and I met through the Indianapolis East Rotary Club. Uh, it going uh, just ahead of COVID, I believe, is when Catherine joined us. And um, uh, as uh, as I got to know her and uh, Sunny Day, which is the uh, food, clothing, and toiletries pantry uh, that she volunteers with, it is inspiring to see what people can do when they identify a need in their community and work together to try and accomplish that. So everybody, it is an honor to introduce to you today, Catherine Basham with uh, Sunny Day Warren Township. So everyone, let's give Catherine a hand. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so let me see if I can figure out how to share my screen. Yeah. That didn't work. Share screen. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Can everybody? Can everybody see that? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So I am going to back up one step. So Sunny Day, our food, uh, toiletry, clothing pantry is actually run by the Warren Township Council of PTAs. So we are. Um, there are three levels of PTAs. If you're not familiar with that, you have the national PTA. Then you go into you know one of the 50 state PTAs, and then underneath that you can have a council PTA that then um, uh, divides up into the local PTAs that would be in each uh, individual school. So the Warren Township Council of PTAs, located here in Warren Township on the east side of Indianapolis, um, runs a couple different things. Um, we run Sunny Day. We run um, we offer a discount card that we put together for um, our local PTA units to offer as a membership benefit. And we run Warren Home Fest. So if you're familiar with that, that is a big community event that's held here in September. So our officers, just to let you know, are uh, myself as president. And then I have Casey Thomas. She's a vice president. She helps coordinate Sunny Day for me at the head level. And then Veronica Grimes, uh, she helped put together our discount card. Our treasurer is Diane Simon and our secretary is Kim Walters. And we are all 100% volunteers. This is something that we do on the side. So here is our sunny day team. I wanted to give you guys a, you know, a quick glimpse of who we are. So I'm gonna go from left to right. So Karen Kinley, she is the face that you see on the left. She is in charge of our pre-orders, which I will describe in detail in just a second. Then we have Casey Thomas. She's in charge of our clothing department. Then I have Carissa Dollar. She does all of our administration uh, paperwork that we need to submit to whether it's Midwest Food Bank or Gleaners or additional things on the side. Next is Tanya Turner. She's in charge of our food. And then you'll see myself. And then lastly is, uh, well, I guess I'm in charge of the deliveries. So I guess I need to tell you that. So, um, so any of the food or any of the donations that come in to Sunny Day, that's something that I coordinate. And then um, me and my volunteer team put it away in the different you know, designated locations. And then the last one is Sharon Berry and she is in tar charge of our toiletries. Okay, so I just ran through all of that for you. So I'm not gonna do that again. So sunny day, um, because we're located on the east side, we, we make sure that we have yard signs that are out throughout the community. We predominantly put them in front of all of our schools. So right now we have um, 16 different buildings here in Warren Township, school buildings that uh, we put our yard signs in front of it, and we've made sure that they're bilingual, if you can see that. So the sunny day part um, stays the same, but then we you know, translate it into Spanish, food, toiletries, and clothing, so that we can hit as many of um, our community members in need as possible. And we are located in the community, or Moorhead Community Resource Center. So that is basically at 10th and Post Road, if you're familiar with this side of town. And this is new for us. This is a new home. Um, we've been here about, almost two years. Uh, they uh, reopened Moorhead Elementary into the community center and as part, they asked uh, for our pantry to move over into this location so that we could serve more of the people in our community. The top, you'll see our business card. So if anybody is interested in having some of these business cards, maybe you just you know, put them up at your, uh, your office, your front desk. Um, I will gladly drop them off um, or even mail them to you. We serve all that are in need. So there are several pantries in Marion County that maybe you have to be within a certain zip code. That is not the, um, the way Sunny Day operates. So we will welcome anybody and everybody. You do not have to have a driver's license. We just ask some basic questions. We just need to know how many people are in your household. 
Is anybody a veteran? Um, the ages of the people in your household, that helps us gear towards maybe do we need to have diapers? You know, do you have young people? Do you need baby food? Um, the el you know, up to the elderly. So, you know, we wish it would be adult diapers, things of that nature. So we just try to make sure that we ask generic questions, but enough information that helps us um, improve our pantry to fit uh, our community members that are in need of our assistance. So our business cards are also bilingual as well. So we primarily see English speaking and Hispanic speaking, but we do get some Creole and um, a few French have come through at times, but mainly this is our two predominant um, languages. So sunny day, we are almost officially 10 years old. So we were, <laughs> we have a birthday coming up here in September that will mark our 10th, um, our 10th anniversary. And we were initially set up by, again, the council PTA and what is called um, Heather Hills slash Highlander Park Ed Adult Education Center. And it was, Sunny Day was established as a toiletry pantry. So for two years, they ran off of donations from the community that provided students, solely stu students only in Warren Township with toothbrushes, hairbrushes, um, deodorant, things of that necessity. And then we were able to uh, partner with Leaners and with Midwest Food Bank. And starting back, back in 2014 with those partnerships, we then added food to our inventory. And then we have been about five years now um, that we have offered clothing. So we take clothing, gently used clothing donations as well. I think they can be new clothing as well. And um, at our pantry. So again, we started off as toiletries and now we're more you know, well-rounded. So food, toiletries, and clothing. Uh, I told you the address. So Moorhead Community Resource Center is located basically at 10th and Post Road. We are open twice a month. So we're open on the second Saturday of the month, 9 to 11 a.m. We're open on the fourth Thursday evening from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And then now that we're located in Moorhead Community Resource Center, uh, Warren Township has uh, allowed us to train the Moorhead staff to distribute emergency supplies during the day. And there are several days that they are open from 8 to 8 p.m. So if a family comes to the center and they are in need of something like food, the toiletries or the clothing, uh, we have given them the paperwork they need to, to track some of those basic questions that we then, you know, submit back to the cleaners and that we use, you know, for ourselves as well. But um, it has made a huge difference in um, our coordinators' lives. And now that we're located in the Moorhead uh, Community Resource Center, because like I said, we're volunteers. So when the emergency purposes came up, we were scrambling to uh, see who was available because we have families, we have other activities, we have lots of things going on in our lives. So um, the impact of being located in Moorhead Community Resource Center has greatly benefited us. We, we have more of a, a family life now. So, um, and we really appreciate the support that they give to us. So again, if you know somebody who has a house fire or somebody who has lost their job or things of that nature, Moorhead is basically open eight to four every day and then eight to eight on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Our biggest supporters are Gleaners, Midwest Food Bank, um, MSD of Warren Township. Uh, obviously one, they let us utilize their facility for free, which is wonderful. We can utilize their maintenance for free. So if something breaks down, they'll send somebody out to help us. They advertise for us. So all the schools advertise community or sunny day for, uh, for their families. And they, you know, they do uh, food drives throughout the year, which is, which is wonderful for us too. And then Audrey's Place Furniture and Thrift Store, they're located on 10th Street. They are um, a large supporter. They provide me the, the, um, Oh, what is it called? Box truck. The box truck that I use to drive down to Midwest Food Bank every month and pick up eight pallets of food and bring it back. So we are very, very appreciative of that support. The Indianapolis East Rotary Club, they uh, they come out at least twice a, a year with volunteers and they help, um, help us man our pantry and distribute food. And then they have also done um, some donation and charity work for us as well. So we really appreciate that. Okay, I got to update that. It says open in Indiana. <laughs> so that's old. So it needs to be in Inspire Small Dot Biz now. But um, so Ryan and his wife Carly, they help us man our um, our website, which is what we utilize to advertise um, and to 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 seek volunteers and to uh, 
to accept donations. So um, I will get that fixed as soon as we get off this meeting. Meyer here on um, East Washington Street, they're another big supporter of our food pantry. And then the high school, Warren Central High School, every year they do a massive huddle up against poverty food drive for us. And it's, I mean, we get a significant amount of canned foods that last us the entire year from that, um, that food drive. So then that way with the funds that we have, we can focus on getting produce and the frozen meats and the toiletries um, front through Gleaners and Midwest Food Bank. And then we do have three cons uh, consistent individual donors who didn't want to be named, but um, they, they provide us a, a fair amount of money every year to help us fill in the blanks when we need to, you know, as you guys all know, when you go to the grocery store now, it is not not that hard to drop 300 bucks if you have a family of four or more. So it's, I mean, it's, it's crazy how much everything has gone up. So, um, and we are purely funded on donations. There is, like I said, we're all volunteer based. We're a nonprofit organization run through the council PTA and um, yeah. So we survive on donations. We survive on volunteers. So if you go to our website, we have our six coordinators that do a bulk of the work, but we need the funds to help us, whether it's for deliveries or it's just for the two distribution days that we're open a month. Um, so you are more than welcome to go to that website, click on the volunteer button, and you can see all our dates um, that we're open. And you can click a little time slot. We just sign up Genius. We've made it very easy um, to accept volunteers. And we would love to show you how we work and how it operates um, and just come out and help. And it's a two hours that goes by quick. And it's enjoyable and it's fun to interact with our patrons. And it's, it just makes you feel good at the end of the day that you're helping those in need. We also are on Facebook. So if you are a Facebook guru, you can search us out on Sunny Day Warren Township. And we post a lot of things on there, not only just about our pantry, but anything that we can get our hands on. So there are a variety of apps and um, many, many pantries on in Marion County and here on the east side. So we, we share information about each other, just like you guys do sharing information and coordinating. So we want to get the word out because maybe the two days that we're open, somebody's busy, but they can maybe go to, you know, another local pantry and get the assistance they need from them. Okay, I was going to give you guys a couple, couple numbers. So we really started tracking the number of people we serve in 2014 when we started our um, partnership with Gleaners and with Midwest Food Bank. So you can see the numbers continue to, to rise. And then as soon as we hit COVID, I mean, the numbers just, they almost, well, they basically doubled, if not. So um, we continue to serve a lot of people. And then finally, I just was going to give you guys my email and I can put it in the chat. But um, so since Sunny Day is run through the council PTA, that is the email address that we use. So it's warrenptacouncil at gmail.com. And we also have a Facebook page, Warren Township Council of PTAs. So, Ryan, that is basically my presentation. And how do I unshare? Hang on. You might have to unshare me. Stop share. There we go. Anyway, um, but I'm here to answer any of your questions that you might have. I, I mean, I don't know if any of you live on the east side, but I mean, I would gladly just give you a tour if you'd be interested. Show you the different rooms because we have a, I guess I didn't go through it. We have three ways for families to pick up food. So. COVID made us rethink and change the way things were set up. So during the, um, the shutdown, fully shutdown portion of COVID, we did a grab and go. So we filled up an entire wagon with food and toiletries and we would wheel it out to everybody's car. So the patrons didn't get out of their car. We just put it in there. Or if they were getting off the bus, we handed them the bag. They could take them back on the bus with the bags. But we kept that process. So you can come in now and still just grab the wagon Take it out to your car, load it up, bring us the wagon back, do a grab and go fast food service. Or you can come in and you can grocery shop for yourself. So we have a room dedicated, set up like a grocery store, and you can go around and pick whichever kind of food you want. So maybe you don't want the green beans that we picked for you in the grab and go wagon, but you'd rather have corn. So this gives you the opportunity to pick what works for your family. And then we started something new, which we call the pre-order. Our line for the grocery store started to get really long. Um, and we wanted to make things efficient and we still wanted people to be able to spread out and be comfortable standing inside a building in line here during the pandemic. So uh, we post on social media uh, a pre-order link in the first 20 to 25 people that sign up, they can go into a Google link and check the boxes of what they want. And they drive around to um, 
a specific side of our building and they can pick up their grab and go items that way. So, or their pre-ordered items that way. So we've made it almost like a grocery store. If you want to, you know, you can do a click list or whatever it might be called, depending on the grocery store you guys go to. But um, it seems to have worked out really well. And then we have a clothing room that you walk in and you've got the racks of clothes and it's all organized by uh, gender and age. So it's it's very easy to move around that room. And we it's unlimited. Basically, you can fill up you know, as many bags as you need of clothes for what you need. And we just ask our patrons to take exactly what they need. So not try to take too, too much. But if you need that, like this weekend, we had somebody that came in and they were devastated by a fire. So she walked out with four bags of clothes because she had five children. So we let her grab as much as she wants. She needed. And so, um, again, that is basically how Sunny Day runs, fully based on donations and volunteers. I have a question for you, Catherine. Yes. I'm just curious with regard to the donation, how does the pandemic affect your organization in terms of donations? You know, it actually increased. I feel like we have more exposure now than we did before the pandemic. Um, so I, I'm not exactly sure. We've always advertised within the, dis the school district. So I, I'm going to assume that it's the business support that has made the difference. So a lot of companies will do their own drives internally, and then they'll come over and they'll drop off whether they did a food drive or they did a toiletry drive or they collected donations for um, their employees. And we do have companies that will specify um, they want to volunteer at this specific day. So I'll, I'll block out that Saturday or that Thursday for their volunteers. So I'm going to guess it's that exposure that companies, they stepped up. And they knew that, you know, the pantries needed support and they helped get. Because we have done, we have done really well. My, the bank account is higher now than it was uh, prior to the pandemic. So. Yeah, that's really nice to hear. Very nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Catherine, uh, Marla has asked a couple of questions in the chat okay. here. And her first question is, how do you recruit volunteers? So initially, we were, you know, a school-based pantry. So we focused years ago just on getting staff and students. So middle school age and above students can come in and help and, and volunteer because we've got a variety of positions that um, can easily be manned by a middle school student. You give them the proper instructions and away they go. So it works. And then a lot of the staff. But nowadays, like I said, um, if we are in need, we post it on our Facebook page. And so we've got two, we've got the council Facebook page and we've got um, the sunny day Facebook page. So we'll post volunteer needs there. And we have a lot of people that will share it on their own social media pages. If we get desperate enough, um, MSD Warren Township, they have in the past gone ahead and done what they call auto calls. Um, and they would put that out there throughout the entire school district that we needed support. But we haven't had to use that in a while. Um, but it was, you know, extremely beneficial to have the school behind us to be able to do that because they can reach quite a few people. Uh, the second question that Marla had asked in the chat is how much income, uh, it, do, how much income does Sunny Day generate per month as far as contributions? Does that mean how much do I collect? or donate from donations. Um, so it varies, it, I mean, it really does vary. So Gleaners gives us a thousand dollars a month to spend. So even though they're giving that to us, we then we spend it. It's use it or lose it when I when we place the orders. So they give us a thousand dollars. Midwest Food Bank gives us eight pallets of food. I've never really calculated what that equates to, but I would assume it'd be very close to a thousand dollars again. Um, and then after that it's donations. So we need at the bare minimum to have probably, so that's what, if I just said that's 12,000, 24,000. We probably, if you count those two as each being a thousand, we probably need to bring in $3,000 a month um, to make the ends meet of what we, what we do right now. So that's where those extra donations come in to play, whether we get the thousand dollars this month or it could be little. We've got a lot of people that will just do fifty dollar increments here and there. And again, it adds up. But to make ends meet, we're probably roughly around three thousand dollars is what we need a month 
um, to keep up with the number of families that we see. Um, and so, Catherine, uh, I don't, I don't think your presentation covered it. How did the name Sunny Day uh, become the name of your organization? No, I didn't cover that. Yes. Okay. So it's that's unique for those of you that notice that it's S O N N Y. So there was a gentleman who was um, the head custodian over at um, Heather Hills Elementary School, and. He must have made a massive impact on um, students and families and staff there at that school building. And his name was Sonny Caldwell. And when he passed away, uh, they they decided that to honor honor his legacy and everything that he did there for the the families and and students and staff. Um, they opened up the the food pantry in his name and they called it Sonny S O N N Y, just like his first name. And then they did Day. So to play off of a, like a nice sunny day. But so that is how that name came to be. I personally never got to meet him, but um, like I said, he must have had a, a big impact on everybody in that in that school building for um, the pantry one to be established in the first place and then two named after him. And his family still, they still reach out to us to, to today. Um, they're not necessarily local. So I've, I've always been very impressed with that, that they still reach out and they make donations and see how they can assist us because they are, they're not here in the continental US, so. Who else, who else has some questions for Catherine? Well, if you don't have any questions, the only thing I just would like to suggest is that, you know, whether you come out and assist us, you guys have any spare time to give back to pantries. Like I said, there are, there's, there's quite a lot. If you go to an app that's called Community Compass, it will pull up all the pantries in your area. And you'll be really surprised at how many there really are throughout Marion County and above and beyond. So, but it focuses mainly on Marion County. So if, there's a chance you or your family can give back. That would be wonderful. And it, honestly, volunteering is like the biggest thing. So um, every little bit helps. So even if it's 30 minutes. Okay. I have a, I have a comment, not a question. Um, I really love what you're doing. Um, when we took a tour of our local food pantry or one of them, it was really mind blowing the amount of people who actually utilize it, how many people actually need it and how they're able to track that. Um, I think it's, it, all I could say is it's mind blowing um, because a lot of times we don't realize how many people are hungry and a lot of those people are employed, but unfortunately they don't make enough money to really cover their expenses. And part of what I do as someone that helps people manage their money is you know really see you know what money they do bring in and let's figure out how we can make it work for us but we're definitely experiencing um a rise in the need so um that's why i just want to say i love what you're doing and even in our local pantry being able to volunteer there has really opened up my eyes and my family's eyes to just see the great need that's there and it's it's not even enough it feels like at times because food goes so quickly That's and nice. toiletries and things like that. So, you know, it's just awesome that more and more places exist. Uh, I know your place has been around for 10 years, but I think that there are some newer ones popping up. And I think that it's it's great. The more the merrier to feed everyone, make sure everyone has what they need. So yeah. kudos to you and your team. Thank you. Yeah. So if anybody's, if you run into anybody that send them our way. So it doesn't matter what what your business is, you know, necessarily, but if you run in into somebody who could, could save a little bit of money by going to a food pantry, suggest it because that's what we're here for. I mean, if that then lets them go do some family experience together because they, you know, were able to, to get a little bit more assistance, whether it's the clothes, the toiletries or the food from us, I mean, that's what it's all about. So if we can cut down some of that, that bill so that they can spend more family time together or pay some you know, utility bill that they have for their house, something to that effect. Um, that's what we're here for. 
And I think I saw a chat come up. So Sunny Day is only located in one, one spot. Um, so like I said, we're six volunteers doing everything we can to, to, you know, to keep it going, keep it organized. Um, so trying to be a well-oiled machine at this point, we can only, we can only, you know, make one building location work for us. And so Catherine, for anyone who's interested in either volunteering or making a donation to Sunny Day, how would they do that? So if you go to our website, www.sunnyday.org, and just make sure you spell sunny as S-O-N-N-Y, um, you'll see a tab that you can volunteer and um, also for donations. So it tells you both whether it's um, a monetary donation or like the items that we're looking for. So it could be donations of that nature too. We have a lot of like, for example, we have some local dentists in our area that will call us up um, when they get an overabundance of floss, toothpaste, you know, toothbrushes, things of that nature. I mean, we will gladly take anything. Um, my mom and dad tend to go out to lunch and dinner a lot. So whenever I see them, they give me their to-go forks, knives, napkins, that packet. And that is one of the things that goes the quickest. I mean, you'd be really surprised. So don't toss that stuff out. Um, same with the plastic bags uh, that you get from the grocery stores. So our patrons utilize that, uh, those plastic bags to get items. We have like a free cart, things that um, either we feel like it would be, we don't put it in the grocery store. We just put it outside. We get some really unique, odd things at times so that we just put it outside. And as you're in line, you can just grab it. So we use the, the, the grocery bags for that. Um, and also when they're shopping inside the store, they can fill up those grocery bags. So, I mean, we take, it is, you know, we take a, a variety of things that you might not even think about. Um, so, like I said, like the plastic silverware that's already prepackaged from, you know, fast food or, you know, dine out places. So, um, And so, Catherine, what are some of the items that are greatly needed that people don't think about like what you've you've mentioned uh, the food the clothing the toiletry products are there specific items that the minute you have them available that patrons need them so when I, if we focus if we focus on clothes to begin with so for the most part boys clothes um if any of you have sons or are a son and you can remember back in the day that is um a clothing need for us because most of the time they you know you get the holes in the pants there's holes in the shirts i mean the kids are the boys are just something different so so, so uh we could definitely use boys clothes and then when it comes to toiletries it could be anything you could think of so i mean that those go off the shelf very quickly so whether it's deodorant Toothpaste, toothbrush, toilet paper, paper towels. Paper towels go very quickly too. Um, but we do all kinds of stuff. If we can get our um, hands on hair care, we'll do that too. So it could be hairspray, shampoo, conditioner, um, anything that you use when you're in the bathroom. So, I mean, just think about that. Bars of soap. Um, so all of that goes quickly off our shelves. And then when it comes to food, so the, um, the frozen meats are a big thing. And um, fruit, cans of fruit. So uh, these, those go quickly too. Um, we seem to do fairly well on like the vegetables, uh, cans of beans, things of that nature, spaghetti sauce and spaghetti, things that are you know easy for all ages to cook are the ones that go off the shelves the quickest. Um, cereal, cereal is a big one. Uh, a lot of families enjoy cereal. So I mean, it could be little mini boxes to the big family boxes to anything. Um, so cereal goes quickly too. Awesome. Uh, does anyone else have any questions for Catherine? Going once, <laughs> going twice. All right. Well, everyone, let's give Catherine a hand for her presentation today. Thank you. Thank you.